Hello and welcome back to the alternate history class. My name's Andrew and here we explore alternate history through the lens of a history class from another timeline. This week we'll be looking at a classic Christmas story from the Great War but through the lens of this timeline's Great War. Alright everyone, today we're going to take a brief look at an event that has really hit the public consciousness, hit the pop culture consciousness from this war, and that would be the Christmas Truce. Now, the Christmas Truce, which took place in 1914, uh, was not an official truce by either side. It was a widespread scattering of unofficial truces between the warring sides that took place in both North America and Europe. Now, a lot of this started in Europe as Germans traditionally celebrate Christmas on Christmas Eve when they're at home with their families. So, on the 24th, many raised Christmas trees in their trenches uh, across both fronts. Now, this was met with different uh, acceptance and different points in the line. There were some points in the line, especially those where the French were in control that um, saw these trees serve as little more than target practice for the enemy across the way. But in many points with the British, the British you know, were obviously wary of sudden enemy activity, but in many places along the lines between the British and the Germans, the, the Christmas trees were taken as a you know, sign of you know, temporary peace as the British had taken the tradition of Christmas trees from the Germans. So they had a decent deal of respect for the Christmas tree, for Christmas itself, and wanted to give into the festive spirit, stop the misery that was living in the trenches in 1914. In North America, it started with something as simple as the singing of carols, at various points along the lines, each side has a story about how they started, you know, the singing. And the evidence points to that in different locations, the Confederates were, would start the singing, and in other locations, the Yankees would start the singing. This... Christmas carol singing happened anywhere where the Christmas trees weren't shot down in Europe as well. Uh, and most of the, day, the, the truces on Christmas Day itself uh, started as ceasefires uh, to bury the dead, something that traditionally happened uh, throughout the war. At various times, there would be time taken to bury the dead to get the to gather the wounded to to clear no man's land uh, a kind of showing of 
you know, common courtesy between the two sides. But at many points along the line, this changed in, in tone. A lot of the soldiers started to come out and make exchanges, which again was not uncommon, but these had a completely different tone. These had the tones of gift giving. Here in North America, the Confederates tended to give the Yankees gifts of tobacco, while the the Yankees would tend to give them uh, some of their spare rations, considering that the South has always had better tobacco than anywhere uh, up north, especially at that time. And the Union had better rations. That's not to say the Union soldiers were living luxurious lives up there, but you know, rations can vary from country to country. Now, eventually, some of these turned into taking pictures uh, with the soldiers from the other side, getting to talking with each other. And according to many a rumor, games broke out between the two sides. North America, uh, it was football, or as any of you from outside North America will call it, American football, uh, where the two sides, having different rule sets, uh, exchanged their styles of the game, and a, a new sport was introduced to the North a sport called baseball that would soon sweep the nation uh, after the war as the soldiers brought it back. But this was the first real instance of baseball with a set of real rules. There were similar games beforehand throughout the North, but this was the first real instance of baseball as we know it today being introduced to the North. In Europe, it was mostly soccer, or as they call it over there, football. And, you know, it was a time of peace and civility between each side. And it's often painted as a a spirit of goodwill to all men kind of thing. And certainly there was some of that, but at this point in time in the war... Many of those who were serving were professional soldiers, and you know, as they did this for a living, they didn't really hold it against their counterparts on the other side for doing this, which is one of the reasons that this doesn't happen again, considering that by 1915, most of those soldiers were you know, either a casualty of war, whether that be dead or injured, or they were promoted up out of fighting uh, roles to more command roles. And those who replaced them were volunteers or drafted soldiers who really just despised the other side because many of them had lost friends, and family members to this absolutely brutal war. And they blamed the other side for it. Now the truce would last for different lengths of time in different places across the front. Some places it just lasted for Christmas Day. Some places it lasted for a couple of days. There were reports that one or two places, especially in the West of uh, North America, it lasted for weeks at a time. But eventually, 
the war was fought again. Now, there are those who think that maybe this could have ended the war, and that's just uh, not realistic. As most of the soldiers who took off the war, as we said, were professionals just looking for a day off. And what better day to take off, especially at that time, than Christmas Day itself? This wasn't something that upper levels of the army were pleased with either. And they would make sure that this never happened again, despite the change in personnel. They didn't want to risk anything. So in future years, they would either carry out operations up to Christmas, on Christmas Day, or ensure that there was some sort of gunfire at most any point along the front. And with rare one or two exceptions, there was never a truce called again on Christmas Day for the rest of the war. Now this will end this week's class. I hope you don't mind a bit of a shorter class today. I hope you all have a Merry Christmas. And next time, we will pick up and look at the treaty that ended the war in Europe, Africa, and most importantly to our class, North America. Thank you for checking out the alternate history class on YouTube. If you enjoyed this week's episode, feel free to like the video. And if you want to see each video when it goes live, subscribe and hit that bell. The alternate history class can be found on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you find podcasts. Big thank you to my patrons. If you'd like to support the show, you become a patron. And if you're in the top two tiers, you'll get a shout out at the end of each episode after you sign up. Thank you for your most important donation, your time, and I'll see you next time as we journey down the path not taken.